So what are our goals in splint design? We want to have decreased joint strain. We want to protect the teeth. We want relaxed muscle. Sometimes I'll see in textbooks a full covered splint. They call it a muscle relaxation splint. It doesn't mean anything. It's a less contracted muscle splint than before. That's your goal. But a full covered splint may not guarantee that. In excursive movements, if you get posterior discluding, you'll get decreased muscle contraction. So an anterior midpoint stop will create less intense muscle contraction. And our therapeutic goal is to exploit the efficacy of this concept. Muscle deprogrammer, Lucia jig, Panky device, that's the beginning. But nobody sits there and goes tap, tap, tap on your deprogrammer when they're asleep. You go tap, tap, tap on your articulator, you put it into a tap, 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 you know, seat your condyle, take your impression. Parafunction doesn't work that way. It will do whatever it takes to get around whatever you put in there to make you look bad. So here is the typical Panky deprogrammer. This will reduce muscle contraction intensity to 30%. That's where we're going to start from. How can it go wrong? That's, that's what I was thinking. What can go wrong here? Let's look for the different ways. Now, typically, we are thinking of canine rise. We know they're going to go sideways. We like to use that canine to disclude the teeth in that movement. So let's assume that the patient moves sideways on a deprogrammer. That's a, that's a kiss of death, a canine contact. Suddenly, the deprogrammer worked for two or three nights, and then their joints started to hurt. Oh, you, you passed the two-day barrier. No, it's because the parafunction goes, huh, huh, oh, yeah, there. I'll just do this now. That's what happens. So now you've got the translated condyle on this side with a canine contact on the same side, that is really bizarre to do, to bring your condyle way far forward and then to clench like crazy. It doesn't happen in mastication. It's a parafunctional act that can be really damaging. Suddenly, you didn't want to mess around with the NTI therapeutic protocol. You got a panky device, it costs you 25 cents, and it goes. Two, three days later, they're miserable, and you go, oh, those NTIs suck. It's a protocol, it's not a piece of plastic. This is all about the protocol of what this parafunctional activity is capable of and how to disarm it. It's, it's almost like it's anchored. As soon as a canine hits a contact or as soon as two molars touch it, boom, everything stops. It's anchored. It's in lockdown. It'll squeeze right there. So you modify the deprogrammer. So as you modify that, we call it an enhanced deprogrammer. We like that term. To, play keep away from the canine. And I, that's the device that I started using for a long, long time. Why? Because I, when I was in dental school, we made splints on the maxilla. So I started making these things on the maxilla. And then all of a sudden, friends of mine, Mike Melker says, well, at Marquette, we make them on the mandible. And we're Marquette, and you're not. Maybe you should consider on the mandible. No. Why would I do that? Oh, by the way, how long will this last? What's great about these slides that I made 15 years ago now, plenty of studies are out. Here's in 2007. Some other guys in Scandinavia or wherever they're from, an NTI splint suppresses muscle contraction tension indefinitely. It's not short term. We used to think that splints don't last very long. Got an intense patient, put the splint in for two or three days, weeks, they feel better, then it comes back. Oh, splints are short lived. No, the patient just gets used to it and can squeeze on it because they can. An NTI doesn't allow it. The, the, the physiology isn't there to make it happen. So back to this where you, we've modified, enhanced the deprogrammer to a, pay, keep away from the canine. Some patients, you give them two or three weeks. They just keep on going. I've had patients do that, and they put a canine right dead center on the upper midline, and they go like mad. And it's hard to get them to do it in the chair because their teeth are together, and they start, no, I, I can't, I can't, stop it. Put their device in. Barely touch it. Go side to side. All of a sudden, their jaw goes, and away it goes. It happens a few weeks after you put the device in, because you start to get relaxation or less intense activity. Their range of motion is now improving. And now they can go farther than they could before, so they do. And as soon as that canine hits a contact, boom, lock down, and they start to squeeze there. Same jaw position, put the device on the mandible, 
Now you're, now you're playing keep away from the upper canine. Doesn't matter, it's still in sizable edge contact. So my default device now is on the mandible. 